When I first started looking at speakers and audio equipment, I was overwhelmed by all the fancy vocabulary reviewers throwing out. In this video, I will try to explain to you the main categories reviewers and music lovers are looking for so you can examine your system when comparing and composing your stereo system and you can better understand what audiophiles are looking for when they're listening and what all the reviewers are talking about when you see those fancy speakers. I'm Jojo, a designer and audiophile. And this, this little guy is to me. Welcome back to my channel. From my experience and understanding, I sorted out five main categories when reviewing the speakers. Soundstage, imaging, timber, frequency response, and transparency. After understanding them, you will have a basic understanding when evaluating your system. Starting with soundstage. Soundstage and imaging are actually like one thing but twofold. When setting up a stereo system with a proper location, you'll be able to hear the space where music taking place. And that including the widths, the depths, or how far, how close, and even heights the music is to you. You will ask like, how can we really hear the space? And that's where the word imaging comes into play. The imaging means how well the system can determine the location of the music source and compose a clear image for us. When recording, artists and the team can determine where they want to record and the relationship between the microphone and the instruments. Each location will have different reverb, sound reflections, ambient noise, and such. It can trigger our memories of sound in different locations. Our brains uses all the details and traces in the sound to construct a sense of location or space when listening. Not only to music listening, but day-to-day -day life as well. How do you determine like how far you are from your friends? Or how do you determine how far that loud noise is coming from? Your brain kind of accumulates information and from experience to tell you how far it is or how loud it is. In post-mixing, the mixer can also arrange instruments into different spots digitally to create a sense of space. All these methods above create what we call imaging and soundstage in the recording. So a good stereo or headphone system should provide you accurate imaging or some people call pinpoint imaging. But soundstage is a more personal thing. It's a more personal preference. Some people like it grand, but some people like it to be intimate. The baseline is a system should demonstrate a complete soundstage and not coloring the sound to a point that the soundstage just collapsed and flattened out. In design, it's kind of like you Photoshop too much of a photo so you can't really see the shape of their face. You can see the nose, you cannot see the actual landscape looks like. And the next is timbre or tonality of the sound. An easy way to explain this is can the system recreate a sound for different materials and instruments accurately? From similar high, like let's say there's a metal bowl and dropping onto the marble floor, it makes a huge sound. And it will sound differently from let's say a beach ball or a basketball dropping on the same floor. Can the system demonstrate that accurately? Can you tell the differences by just hearing the sound? If you try this with let's say like a phone or TV or even like you know, computer speakers, you will know how hard it is. Without image, without visual, this is actually really hard. So a tonality correct or natural sounding speaker is actually a true high-end speakers will show. Frequency response. It means how well a speaker can reproduce sound from different frequencies. On a spec sheet, we'll often see something like, let's say, 52 hertz to 28k hertz plus minus three decibel. It means in this range from 52 to 28k, the speakers can reproduce the sound within three decibel differences. That's the best range your speakers can produce. Not the full range, but the range that the brand sees as optimal. So when we see the graph of this kind of frequency response, the most common types are flat response, V-curve or A-curve. 
And this means how a speaker reacts to different frequencies or the character of the speakers. A flat response means from the low bass to the high treble, the speakers can dish out evenly without altering the sound of the source, which is really, really hard to achieve. And it is the pinnacle of for sound audiophiles, but it might sound boring or plain to others. Then there's the V curve and A curve. So the V curve means the speaker's bass and their treble region are tilted up, giving them more bass and treble. But the mid-range is recessed relatively. Most of the budget-friendly products, home theater products, will be in this category because it gives us more bass and sparkles where our ear and body can easily pick up. It will make us feel more impactful and lively, which lots of people like. But sometimes it can alter the sound too much that is not truthful and easier to get listening fatigue. Then there is the A curve, where it emphasizes the mid-range and tune down the top end and bass. This type of speakers is specialized for people who like vocals, jazz, or other genres focusing on the mid-range. So the A-curve speakers will give you more lush and forward mid-range, making a singer stepping out from the band even more. So the only way to find out which type of characters you like the most is actually through listening. There's really no way around it. And there is really no right or wrong for liking certain kind of speakers. This hobby is highly personal, so the only person who needs to like your system is you. And sometimes your close family who are gonna suffer or enjoy listening with you. Next thing is transparency. Transparency is such a big word and really hard to explain in a way. What it means is how good a system can reveal the moment where the recording took place. Can you see the picture of how they're recording the song by listening to the music? Can you listen into the recording with no obstruction, kind of live, relive that moment where they're recording the music? So it is a combination of all the elements we mentioned. If we took out any element mentioned earlier, there's no transparency. To build an image in our brain, we need to create a database in our brain first. Without experiences and references, there is no way we can understand or comprehend a good system. So once again, a critical listening for this hobby of being an audiophile is like wine tasting. We need to have that experience first have that database in your brain to really understand what this is about. So no textbook or video can really replace that, which makes the bar really high for this kind of hobby. But if you are curious about a hobby, I hope my video delivers a warm welcome to you. And upcoming next, I will review and compare several entry-level speakers that are on sale this holiday season. If you're interested, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell, and maybe share this with people that might be into that what I'm doing here. That's it for the day and we'll see you next time. You just want to just sleep and not really showing any emotion I guess. Bye!